the thing to remember with naysayers is they're not talking to you when they're saying all these negative things. <laughs> you know, they're, they're talking to themselves. They're explaining yeah. to themselves why they can't do real estate. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Well, welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. As always, I got Matt Jones with me on these Hump Day Hustles. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. How are you doing, Todd? I'm doing fantastic. Just a, another beautiful day, man. And, uh, you know, just excited about what's going on in the world. And, you know, obviously craziness going on in the world. But, hey, there's still opportunity and there's still excitement. And I am just optimistic about the future. So I'm excited. Excellent. Awesome. So um, anything new in, in your world, Matt? Well, I'm uh, working on hopefully to be able to syndicate my first property by the end of the year. And then, uh, you know, for my uh, personal life, uh, my wife and I are going to take a few days to go hiking down in the Winona, Minnesota area. Oh, cool. Beautiful area down by the Mississippi River and Bluffs. And it's, it's gorgeous down there. So you'll have, you'll have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we, we've been spending a lot of time, uh, family, we've been doing a lot of camping, uh, hiking and, uh, plan on doing some this weekend as well. So it'll be good. Um, and it's, it's sports are back up and running for the kids. So that's been getting a, a little crazy. And of course, school is coming, um, within, you know, a few days. And so, uh, I guess when this releases school will be technically already started. So we get to balance that. We get to balance uh, sports. We get to balance, you know, everything together again, which is, which is all right. You know, a little, little back to, um, back to reality, I guess, uh, after, after the summer. So it'll be fun, be good. And, uh, you know, we're up for, we're up for the new challenges that it's going to have uh, with, with the COVID craziness too. Yep. We'll have to see how it plays out. I, I don't know yet. <laughs> it'll be interesting schools will be definitely interesting for the first you know few months maybe six months maybe even longer uh it'll be interesting to see kind of how things go and how they play out but hey you know what you just got to remain optimistic about it you've got to understand there's there's challenges that are presenting themselves but at the same time with every challenge comes opportunity so exactly you could say the exact same thing of real estate Absolutely. Real estate has all kinds of craziness going on and all kinds of challenges, but again, has, has opportunity as well. And, you know, we're looking at um, doing some deals right now. I have some amazing opportunity uh, involved with them, but there's, there's risks and challenges involved in everything. So um, yeah, it, it, same thing goes in real estate. You're hundred percent right. Yep. Cool. And uh, you know, when people are first getting started out, you know, it's hard to, remain optimistic when things aren't so going so well and, and you might have some people in your life, friends, family, acquaintance, coworkers, who are not so supportive of your real estate ventures. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about handling those naysayers in your life. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you're going to hear it from, from all over, Matt. I mean, I, I don't, do you, do you have any stories of, of beginning in real estate or even, even recently where you've heard, people saying like anything negative to you? You know, I guess not to me personally so much. Uh, you know, if I have- You're I, lucky, man. You're lucky. Yeah, it, it was just so non-memorable that I forgot all about it, to sure. be honest. Sure. I, I mean, there's been plenty of times for, for me, um, you know, um, when I was- when I was first beginning, I was, I was told many times that like, Oh, you're, you're, yeah, it's crazy. That's stupid. You know, I, oh, I know people and I started in 2008. So the, the market just crashed. So I know I got friends who just lost everything. And, uh, he, he, I heard that a lot, you know, I got friends, I got family or, you know, so-and-so lost everything. You're, you're going to do the same thing. It's just, it's just not worth it. Uh, I remember I bought my first rental property and I also had a flip going at the same time. And, and uh, I was telling the neighbor and then the, the uh, so I was at the rental property. And when I first started, I was working on the properties all myself. Right. And so I'm at the rental property and I'm working on it. And then we were out, I was outside doing something. I can't remember exactly, but the neighbor was also uh, working on, on the 
house next door and I was talking to him and he used to be, used to do a lot of real estate flipping um, and own some rentals. And, and uh, he was, we were talking about what I was doing and I was telling him I'm flipping a couple houses and I've got this. And, and he said, well, look, you can make money right now doing some, doing these rentals if you're careful, uh, but you can't make any money doing flipping. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose everything. Uh, and so, you know, hurry up and get this flip done and then, and then never do one again. And he couldn't have been more wrong um, because I made more money from, you know, in that 2008 to 2012 range than I did uh, as the market started to shift upward, my profit margins actually went downward. Um, so he, he couldn't have been further from the truth, but that was the first example of, well, that was a real estate investor a guy who I was like, Oh, this guy knows what he's doing. And then he tells me, don't do that. Right. And that, that's happened to me a lot. I can remember, um, you know, my, my dad, very good intentions. Um, he told, he, he said, well, don't you feel bad? You know, you're, you're taking advantage of these people that they lost their homes and now you're taking advantage of them. And, profiting on their, on their hardships. And that, you know, luckily I had already thought about that question before because that can catch you off guard. Right. And I hear people talk about that with rentals too. And we'll dive into that in a second, but my, my answer to him is, well, first of all, I, I'm making a lot of these people extremely happy because I'm buying their property from them that they're short sailing. And I essentially, freed them from this massive burden, right? That was upon them, that was on their shoulders. And so I've been to closings before and I have these owners um, of properties that I buy their property from and they come up to me and they've given me hugs. They've like thanked me up and down um, how amazing it is that I came in and bought their house from them and how big of a relief that, you know, they have uh, the weight off their shoulders. And same thing with these foreclosures. It's like, well, you know, dad, look at these, but I, it's unfortunate these people lost their properties. Absolutely. What I'm doing is I'm taking these properties that somebody lost through no fault of my own, right? I, did, I didn't foreclose on them. I didn't tell them to get into this loan. I didn't make them lose their jobs, but I'm taking this property that needs a lot of work and I'm providing then uh, a solution to the problem, which is a property that's a dumpy property that hasn't been updated. I'm updating that property and providing a great place for the next family to live in. So I'm providing myself, I'm providing a service for other people. I think that's a big thing you got to look at. You know, what are you actually accomplishing when you're into this real estate thing? It's not just about the money. If you're, if you're in it only for the money, it's a lot easier for naysayers to get after you and it actually make you feel like, Oh crap, I shouldn't be doing this. But if you're in it for more than just the money for, for making a true impact and difference, it's a lot easier to defend what you're doing. It's a lot easier to um, continue to push on with what you're doing because you truly believe in it, right? You truly have a passion for it. And so just because somebody says, well, you shouldn't be doing that, it's a lot easier for you to answer, well, this is why I'm doing it. This is why I believe in it. And, and to be able to push on with something like that. So I think after I explained that to my dad, he went, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. But he was thinking of it as I, I'm just taking advantage of people. Um, from the outside in. And again, had I not had the right mindset, that could have knocked me down and potentially, you know, that's my, that's my dad. Like I respect him, you know, more than probably anybody out there. And so, you know, that could have knocked me down had I been not really thought through that whole process. Hi, I'm Matt Jones. And if you're like me, you're looking to grow your real estate business while connecting with others. Well, there's this incredible new virtual experience unlike any other. I'm talking about the North Star Real Estate Conference. It's coming to you online October 22nd and 23rd. And it's not like one of those boring webinars that you find all the time out there. No, this is going to be interactive. You're going to have the opportunity to network and grow relationships with the other attendees as well as with the speakers. If you'd like a free preview, we're going to have a free event on September 2nd over lunch hour. You can sign up today for both events at nreconference.com and use the code DEX, D-E-X, for $50 off. Yeah, I think the general public has a lot of misunderstandings about real estate. And, you know, they see the sort of comical slumlords on, in, uh, uh, in movies and such. And so they think, oh, this is what a real estate investor is. Uh, but, I mean, granted, there are certainly people like that out there. But 
they're the minority, I would say. Yep, yep. Yeah, and there's a lot of negatives right now. If you're a landlord right now, there's a lot of negatives going out around landlords and, and you know, uh, understandably at, at times, you know, there are those slumlords. Again, there's, as you said, there's, there's, there are slumlords, but they're, the, the majority of, of owners, property owners um, and property managers are good, decent human beings and they're, they're providing a good service. But the few that are not good, decent human beings are just not providing any good service are making a bad show for everyone, right? They make everybody look bad and, and that just really just kind of expands quickly, right? Everybody hears the one story and they just assume it's everybody. And so you get that, you get that like um, from people being negative about you, about uh, your, your rentals. And I had people talking about the toilets, tenants, trash, you know, oh, how do you deal with these, these trashy tenants and blah, blah, blah. And they talk bad about the tenants and they talk like these tenants are like below them. Um, and, you know, that oh, I, so-and-so did, so, you know, this and oh, your tenants are just trash and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that could be really negative if you're not really, again, understanding and, and having a, the right principle to begin with. So, you know, I've had people say that and, and my answer, my answer has always been like, look, if I take care of my tenants, provide them a solid foundation, solid place to live. Uh, if I respond to their needs, if I give them expectations, like look, my tenants know that our operation hours are from 9 AM to 5 PM. And they know that that's when they're supposed to call us. And if it's before or after those hours, they don't call us unless it's an emergency, a true emergency. And we explain what an emergency is and we define it. We communicate with our tenants. And guess what? We don't get calls at midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. We just don't. Um, and, and if we do, we've got solutions for that too. We've got the right people in place to be able to provide that experience for our tenants to where we can take care of those issues. If you understand like, that these are other human beings that you're dealing with and you treat them with respect, you, you know that they're going to do the same thing back to you for the most part, right? There's, there's, it's not always going to happen, but when people try to scare you with tenants and toilets and trash and all that kind of stuff, and they think they tell you it's a nightmare and you don't want to do it. If you know, if you have your business plan, if you know your model, or if you have the right people in place, you know that that's just a scare tactic and you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. And if you're just able to respond with logic and, and really explain yeah. like, hey, this actually makes sense to do this. I'm adding value to people. I'm helping people. Uh, you know, there are people like that that are bad that are in real estate, but uh, you know, I'm not one of those. I'm, I'm one of the good guys. And, and you know what? A lot of times, Matt, it does, it's not even that conversation. Like sometimes it's just like, oh, yep, yep, yep. You're right. You're right. Sure. Because do you, do I really want to argue with somebody that just really truly mm -hmm has that belief, right? I don't, I don't care. Like, I don't care. But if I know in my head, the reason why, and I know in my head, and I believe in my, my, my spirit that like, this is what we can do. Like, I don't need to defend it. Right. And I can continue to push on. I can have those negative voices chirping in my ear. And, and those just kind of go by me because I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. It's just like when I was in this business and, and I'm getting these banks that I'm calling up, you know, this is 2009, 2010. And I kind of ran out of money in my personal credit to use. I couldn't get any more loans. I was really having a challenging time to figure out how can I grow my rental portfolio. So what did I do? I went on called a bunch of banks, all these local banks. And I got so many no's. I've told this story before. I, you know, I called hundred plus banks and I got almost every one of them said no. And some of them told me I was crazy, I was stupid, like I'm going to lose my all my money, and like it's just the worst idea ever. And these are bankers, like these are respected people, right? Bank bankers are are supposed to be financially savvy, and they're telling me I'm an idiot and I'm going to lose all my money, and you know I'm my family, I'm putting my family at risk, and all this, you know, they're telling me I'm like I'm an idiot. Well, well happily, my brain didn't allow them to, to infect me. Right. <laughs> and and I, I pushed on because I believed in what I was doing. I knew the numbers. I could see it. I could feel it. I could, you know, I, I knew exactly where I needed to go. And I, I 
firmly believed in that, that I just pushed what they set aside. And I said, you know what, that's fine. You can believe what you want to believe, but I'm going to believe what I believe and I'm going to keep on pushing on. And eventually I was able to find enough banks to lend to me. I found a handful of banks that said, yeah, we'll do this. This is a great idea. We love what you're doing and we're all in. And it just takes that one person or that one, you know, bank, whatever, to believe in you and to say, yeah, let's do this for you to be able to move on to the next level. So it doesn't matter that the other 99 said, no, you're stupid and you're crazy and you're going to crash and burn. That one person that says, hey, you know what? I love what you're doing. Let's work together. That's the one person that's going to move you forward. That's the opportunity that you're looking for. So you've got to keep on getting those no's to get to that yes, finally. You know, that, that reminds me, actually, uh, when I was first starting out and wanted my first property to be multifamily, you know, the banker I went to first uh, tried to explain, like, no, you need to do a single family or we're not going to be able to approve you for, you know, a triplex or fourplex or duplex or whatever. And so I was like, well, yeah. not going to do business with you because you don't have my vision. And so I found one yeah. who had, uh, could share my vision with me. You know, I, yeah. I think the, the thing to remember with naysayers is they're not talking to you when they're saying all these negative things. <laughs> you know, they're, they're talking to themselves. They're explaining yeah. to themselves why they can't do real estate. Yeah, yeah. They've got, exactly. They've got these limited beliefs that they've put in their head somehow, whether it's an experience they, you know, their uncle told them about or it's an experience that they dealt with themselves or it's just like, they just don't believe in themselves, period. Um, yeah, you're right. It's not that it's, 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 it's their limited beliefs. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's because they're trying to protect you. But it's usually it's protecting you because it's out of ignorance, right? It's out of lack of knowledge. Um, it, it's just out of a lack of understanding. Like, like, look, when my dad w was asking me about, you know, dealing with these properties and, you know, he, it was just a lack of understanding and knowledge. And when I explained it to him, it made sense to him. And then it was okay. Right. It totally changed like his paradigm, his, his, his way of thinking to when I was able to go, look at, this is why this is a great thing. It allowed him to go, Oh, I didn't see it like that. That's great. And, and again, I'm not telling you to go in and like, that was a relationship with my dad. So of course we're going to talk about it. I'm not telling you to go and you don't have to change everybody's mind. That's not your goal. Your goal should not be to change people's mind. Your goal should be to have your own mind set and, and keep it there and understand what you're doing and believe in it. Now, if you change other people's minds, great, but that's not, it shouldn't be your goal is to, you know, for every naysayer, go in and, and change their mindset and make them real estate investors. That's just not reality. You're going to, you're going to bang your head against the wall if you're trying to do that. Yep, exactly. I mean, you know, you can, like you say, you know, you know when they, they tell you all these naysaying comments, you're like, okay, thank you for that advice. I appreciate it. And then, you know, just keep doing what you were doing. Yep. Yep. And, and you know, look, you're going to get in every, every capacity of life. It's going to be, you know, in, in your business life, it's going to be in different steps of your business life. Anytime you're, anytime you're going to try to break that paradigm, you're going to have people that are going to say something to you that's trying to keep you in your paradigm. And that, that's just, that's just reality. Whether it's, you know, your business, shoot, think about, I don't, I don't know about you, but anytime you get married, like somebody's always telling you, ah, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, it's, you know, there's always somebody that's got that paradigm that says, ah, don't do it. Like that's a, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Oh, you're going to have kids. Oh, kids are crazy. Don't do it. You know, whatever you're going to do in life, you're always going to have that, those naysayers. And if you listen to everybody, you'd be doing nothing. Right. And actually then when you're doing nothing, then you'd be getting told that you need to be doing something. And, and you know, so you just drive yourself crazy if you listen to all the naysayers out there. I've heard it explained as if you've got like a bucket of uh, crabs, live crabs on the beach and you know, you know, one crab is trying to climb out of the, the bucket, the other crabs are going to like pull it back down into the bucket. Yeah. 
So don't yeah. let don't let them pull you back down. <laughs> I'll let them get out of the dang bucket, man. <laughs> you got you got to escape the bucket, and and that's part of you know, look, surrounding yourself with the right people, right? I mean, we we always talk about how powerful it is to surround yourself with the right people. And getting in groups, getting in part of uh, you know some of these meetup groups, getting part of going to conferences, just getting involved in groups. Uh, and meeting individuals that are where you're at or even that want to get where you're at but have that mindset or are ahead of where you're at is always going to be so valuable because they've got that same mindset. They're always trying to switch and always trying to shift their paradigm, always trying to grow, always wanting to push the envelope. Uh, Those are great groups to be involved in. Those are great people to be uh, around because – they're going to allow you to grow. And there might be even some naysayers in there, but for the most part, there's people that are like, oh, that sounds really great. I think I encourage you to do that. And so really encourage people to look at their network, look at who they're being involved in. And I'm not telling you to go cut everybody out of your life, but make sure you've got those people in your life as well. Like that's who you need to surround yourself with. Yep. And you've got that uh, group, Multifamily Mastermind, which I'm part of, and, and it, it's really a great uh, supportive group. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's fun. And look, I mean, it's just great to be involved with like-minded people. And, you know, if you're, if you're trying to grow, you need, you just, you just need that. There's no other way around it. And talk about being able to shift your paradigm quickly. Being able to shift your paradigm quickly can't happen, in my opinion, only happens like the speed of it happens if you're surrounding yourself with people that have already been where you want to go because they're already talking about it all the time. Like it's already, it's not even that it's, it's maybe possible. It's, it's being done. Like you, you know, so if you're around people that it's like, Oh, this is being done. Like I can do this. Like, cause look, you've never spent a long period of time with one person. You're like, wow, that person's a superhero. Like I don't, it's physically impossible to do what they do. I, I don't even know how I can. Like maybe you spent like half an hour. And you're like, whoa, that person just blew my mind. But if you've spent a substantial amount of time with somebody, you're like, oh, they're just a human being. And they're an amazing person maybe, but they're a human being and I can do what they do. Absolutely. So, uh, Anything else, Matt, on, on naysayers, on uh, how, do we, how do we not listen to them, anything like that? Well, I would just say, uh, you know, it said that you are the, you know, you know, the five people that you spend the most time with, you know, that have, they're going to have the most impact on you and you're going to kind of become and have the same mindset as them. So really be selective about who you spend your time with. Uh, you know, if there's somebody in your life who uh, you spend a lot of time with and they're a naysayer, you know, maybe you need to move on or spend less time with them. Uh, of course, it's up to you who you decide how to spend your time with, but uh try to focus on being around people who have a positive influence on you rather than a negative one. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned the mastermind group and that was one of the reasons why I decided that was going to be a great format for, you know, my coaching is to do these mastermind groups because you are surrounding yourself with people that are aggressively pursuing goals. And, and that's another thing that you need to get rid of the naysayers is you need aggressive goals. You need goals that you're fully committed to. If you're fully committed, if you're fully aware of where you're going, you, it's a lot easier to, you know, just let that stuff kind of brush by you and, and not be absorbed within your, your mind and your spirit, right? It's, it, we already know where we're going. We're surrounding ourselves with people that are doing the same thing and we're doing that together. And it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. Exactly. So awesome, man. Well, uh, that's all I've got. I, we, we need to keep on mentioning. We've got the North star real estate conference to NRE, uh, conference.com. People need to sign up for that. It's going to be fantastic. Talk about, uh, you know, like this, gr- like what we're talking about, getting rid of these naysayers and surround yourself with the next thing blue- group. Like that's what this conference is all about. It's going to be an experience. It's going to be where you're going to have some amazing networking uh, and there's going to be awesome speakers and everybody that's going to this conference, this conference is specifically um, we, we, what 
several weeks ago, Matt, we, we sat down and we talked about kind of our vision and like where we, who we want at this conference and like where we want it to go. And one of the things we talked about is we want committed people right? We, we don't just want that weekend warrior that decides one day that they're going to become a real estate investor if it's convenient for them. Like that's not who we want that's at this conference. And that's not who we're inviting to this conference. So if that's you, if you're listening to this and you go, Hey, yeah, maybe one day I'll, I'll think about becoming a real estate investor. Or maybe one day I'll get serious. Like, I don't want you at the conference. I'm sorry. But if you're going, Hey, this is where I want to go. This is where my vision is pointing me. This is where I really see myself and I'm committed you need to be at the conference. Like there's no reason to not be at the conference and that's yeah. who's going to be there. So if you want to surround yourself with other people that are fully committed, probably get some, probably get some tickets. Absolutely. And, and we got a promo code, right? What's a, what's a, what's a promo code, Matt? Uh, well, your promo code is, is Dex, D-E-X. Oh, okay. Or if you want to use mine, it's Jones, J-O-N-E-S. <laughs> there you go. So they can use uh, Dex, D-E-X, or Jones uh, either way, but they can get uh, a discount on the tickets uh, to get them in. And we're not charging a lot. We want people to come. We want people to enjoy themselves. And it's virtual. Um, so you can do it from the own comfort of your home, but it's not meant to be your typical virtual like deal. It's not like uh, we, we're not wanting you to just sit and listen to like a podcast. We want you to actually learn and we want you to actually be involved and communicate and network and make connections that are going to be valuable for your journey as you go. Right. And that, that's, that's the goal of the conference. Yep. And the conference is on October 23rd and 24th. Uh, we're actually going to have a free uh, workshop, an interactive workshop on October 14th about how to network at online events. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I think I knew that, but, you know, my, my brain is like, I got so many things going on, but that's, that's a great idea. And, um, so people can check that out as well. Uh, is that going to be on the website? How yep, at nreconference.com. Yep, you can sign up under free events. Okay, cool. Awesome, Matt. Well, that, that's it. Um, I, I wasn't meaning to get all advertising to, to everybody, but I think it's super valuable for people to go to. Uh, so it's, I guess it's less of an advertisement than a, uh, an ask if, if you're serious and if you want to be involved in real estate, I, I think you need to go to the conference. Yeah, tremendous value. I mean, it, it can be a game changer for everyone who's listening. Yeah, for sure. Awesome, Matt. Well, you have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day Saturday. Thanks, you too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. But your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also, look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.